All right. Well, we've got a nice late morning session going. Pre really appreciate you all coming. It's going to be a fun talk. We're going to talk a little bit about how we turn smart contracts into ZK databases, into ZK verifiers via Chainlink. Space and time is a decentralized data warehouse. We're, we're building the ZK layer for Web3, and we enable that ZK layer with Chainlink facilitating ZK proofs going on chain and verified on chain. I'm Scott Dykstra, I'm the CTO of Space and Time, and uh, spent the last decade in Web2 centralized data warehousing, kind of centralizing the world's data for the Fortune 500 into centralized analytic black boxes. And it's been really fun the last couple of years to be building Space and Time, a decentralized data warehouse that tears down all this hard work we did the last decade uh, in, the, in the Web2 world. Smart contracts aren't very smart. We, we were kind of shocked three years ago when we found out that smart contracts don't have access to really any data on chain. Like smart contracts can't query data from their own chain, which we all know if we've been writing Solidity that smart contracts, especially in the EVM, can only access um, you know, wallet trans the current wallet transaction, wallet balances, and their own smart contract memory. That's about it. A question as simple as show me all wallets with a balance greater than 1,000 link and at least two transactions on chain, a very simple question, cannot be answered in the EVM. Uh, especially, you know, much worse, more complicated questions. I mean, what if your smart contract wants to know, hey, show me all liquidity pools with a TVL greater than a million. Show me all wallets who've at least, uh, show me all wallets representing gamers who have spent at least two hours in game and have minted an NFT. Lastly, a question like, um, what is the average lending rate today for USDC across Aave, Maker, and Compound? Like, those questions got progressively more complex. The third one actually adding off-chain data to the question. The point is, smart contracts, on the EVM especially, can't actually access data from their own chain or other chains. And there's plenty of uh, startups or, I guess, well-funded projects trying to solve this problem with ZK. But the ZK solutions in the market are nascent, immature, fragmented, and they certainly don't have input data as a uh, parameter. And that input data needs to be indexed blockchain data that's indexed in a verifiable way to answer these questions. So wh what is the market doing? What do, what do devs do to solve this problem? Hey, I'm a DeFi developer. I need to build a more sophisticated DeFi protocol, a data-driven DeFi protocol. Or hey, I'm a Web3 game developer and I need to give data-driven rewards to my players on-chain for certain accolades earned in-game or even certain on-chain activity like NFT participation. Well, you know what they do. Just index data into a centralized off-chain database, call it Postgres, Snowflake, you name it, whether it's a data warehouse or database. A centralized indexer that indexes that data into a centralized database off-chain, and then just like attach some centralized Oracle system between your off-chain database and your smart contract and call it a day, right? Well, the problem with that, with that approach, which by the way is what a lot of very popular DeFi protocols we all use today does, the problem with that approach is you're, you know, you're, uh, you're centralizing all your data into a centralized black box off-chain, bringing it back on in a centralized way, and using that to power DeFi. The whole point of DeFi is we need at least trust minimized, at the very least, off-chain. And, and furthermore, it defeats the whole purpose of blockchain in the first place. If all the actual business logic and, and interactivity of your protocol is off-chain in a centralized black box, why are you even building in Web3? Space and Time solves this problem in a truly trustless, ZK-proven way. When we set out to build Space and Time and solve this problem and make smart contracts smarter and give smart contracts access to the full chain state of their current chain, of their own chain, other chains, and off-chain, we realized zero knowledge is the right approach for this. Uh, two and a half years ago when we started building, uh, the primitives available in the zero knowledge space were nascent. Halo 2, Plonk was kind of early. These, these projects were not well understood. We started by just building a ZK acceleration framework, a GPU acceleration framework to, uh, with NVIDIA's CUDA framework to, in, to accelerate the proofs on GPUs. And then on top of that GPU acceleration framework, we developed a novel circuit for SQL, a, an actual ZK proof of SQL databases such that we could prove to a smart contract that the query results against index data are trustless, tamper-proof, the underlying data hasn't been tampered, and the actual query execution hasn't been tampered. But, but Scott, I mean, having a ZK proof 
against off-chain data, even at scale, still doesn't really create a trustless end-to-end -end connection of index data from the chain into this CK prover, and then query results coming back on chain to be verified. What we had to do additionally was basically invent verifiable blockchain indexing. So if we have a ZK proof that proves the query execution, how do we prove that we actually collected data from the chain and transformed and decoded it and loaded into this prover in a verifiable way? We, we, we created a verifiable, essentially ZK compatible indexing. And then on the verification side, we realized, hey, you know what a great step towards verification on-chain would be? Actually verifying natively on the chain link nodes. And we did some very hard work with, the, with functions in its early days, and it's kind of you know, pre-release to look at functions and say, okay, what NPM packages do we need for some advanced math to run on Chainlink? And we announced yesterday, we're very excited to announce that we're actually verifying these proofs natively on uh, the, the DAWN, the, the Chainlink Decentralized Oracle Network. Um, and we're, we're doing so for very, very low gas execution of this sort of pattern off-chain. Chainlink offers us a very low cost, high performance verifier for very complex proofs. Now, a lot of our customers, clients, builders, devs, they want to verify natively on chain on their target chain. Like, hey, I, want, I have a smart contract on Polygon that needs uh, aggregated interest rates from USDC lending, the example I gave earlier. Or I have a smart contract on Polygon that needs the implied volatility of Tesla stock if it's for you know, tokenizing RWAs. And on Polygon, a, pr a proof generated off-chain against index data for a query against that index data will be verified on-chain in, in cents, you know, call it nine cents of gas. But on Ethereum, this is going to add up. These, these verifications of ZK proofs are going to be very costly on Ethereum. So the perfect sort of joint venture, if you will, would be generating the proofs off-chain in a single ZK prover, but verifying those proofs on the Chainlink DAWN, having Chainlink come into consensus on the redundant verification of the proof, and then relaying or sort of sending the query result back to the client on-chain. And we can do that on Ethereum with very low cost, right? This just looks like a normal Chainlink job. From a developer's point of view, the developer's simply executing a normal Chainlink request, but the endpoint for that request is space and time, not some external API, not a price feed. The endpoint is space and time. So developers just kicking off a Chainlink job on chain. Their smart contract is, uh, you know, requesting some data from Chainlink, and then Chainlink's requesting some data subsequently from space and time, being proven off chain in the space and time network of provers, verified with Chainlink, and then relayed on chain to avoid Ethereum gas. What we're going to all find very soon is that all these nascent fragmented zk solutions on the come up will be very, very expensive to prove on Ethereum. So. How does it work? The client contract calls Chainlink and says, hey, I need some data to facilitate data-driven, uh, you name it, <laughs> to facilitate data-driven, uh, I don't know, lending where every single borrower doesn't have to get the exact same rate. Like today on Aave, I get the same rate as a very seasoned DeFi DGen who's already paid off three prior flash loans or <laughs> regular loans on Aave, if you will, right? You get the same rate as a Web3 newbie. And that's, you know, it's very static. If we want to drive dynamic data-driven lending, we'd look at on-chain activity, we'd roll up a, a wallet's on-chain history, previously paid off loans, things like that, typical approaches to lending. So we can index the wallet's full history into space and time, process that wallet's full history in space and time, generate a risk score, as an example. There's protocols today that are doing this. Verify that risk score on the Chainlink Oracle network. So we're proving off-chain, we're verifying off-chain on Chainlink, and then relaying to a client contract. The client contract just calls Chainlink the same way they would for any Chainlink job. The use cases 
are kind of uh, ever-changing in this market. And everyone asks me, well, Scott, like, seems like you guys are doing a lot of very hard work to build some pretty mind-blowing infrastructure, but like, are people actually using this? Like, do people actually need to connect data to their smart contract? Just think about typical business logic. Like, every app you've ever built outside of Web3 had a database system that was queried by an API front end that pushed data to the, you know, to the real front end, to the UI. Uh, where is the query layer in Web3? It does not exist. It's centralized, it's off-chain, it's a, it's a Snowflake database or a Google BigQuery data warehouse with, with centralized index data coming into it. And you cannot use analytic data centralized off-chain to power on-chain trustless DeFi protocols or, or, or you know, native rewards on-chain that are secured. So actually, let me go back. So, so the use cases we've already seen are, are, are wide. Uh, and everything from uh, you know, providing accolade-based rewards to gamers for certain activity in-game that they achieved or accolades. Cross-chain derivatives where, hey, I have a hub and spoke model where my, my primary hub smart contract is on a popular chain like Ethereum or Polygon, and I have these spoke smart contracts, spokes of liquidity, if you will, that are deployed to like Arbitrum, Optimism, uh, Base, you name it, right? Or non-EVM chains like Sui and Say. Uh, we're seeing this, this, this cross-chain world grow and multiply, not because new chains really bring new tech to the table, but because new chains obviously bring lower costs. And in this multi-chain, cross-chain world, it becomes an even bigger problem because smart contracts not only need access to basic questions about activity on their own chain, but now they need to see the liquidity across all their chains. I was asked by a major DeFi protocol that's about holding about 100, 100 million, uh, uh, doing about $100 million of volume a day. They said, you know, we have like a hub on Ethereum, but we have four spokes on Arbitrum, Optimism, and ETH, or, or Polygon, and we need to kind of sum up all of our collateral available right now every like 20 minutes across all these different chains, the 180 different liquidity pools that we operate across these four chains. I need a query that sums up my total collateral available across these liquidity pools and kind of returns them to my hub on ETH every 20 minutes. And I'm happy to pay for the chain link gas. That's pretty minimal. I'm happy to pay for space and time gas. That's pretty minimal for the prover off chain. What I'm not willing to pay for is the verification time on Ethereum, on the hub. Great, that's where Chainlink comes in. Chainlink offers a very low-cost way to verify off-chain. Um, there's so many nascent budding solutions in the indexing space. Everyone says, well, Scott, like, if you're just building an indexer, I mean, there's like 80 other indexers. You're just playing a very competitive market. Indexing is a necessary evil. It's just table stakes. Every data platform, every ZK-proven platform in Web3 will need index data at some point. The problem is most ZK solutions are not indexing the chain in a verifiable way. So you're building all this arbitrary off-chain verifiable compute via ZK, but you have no input data to actually prove against. And our thesis was, instead of doing very, very complex calculations off-chain with a little bit of input data, let's build very scalable aggregations of data. The actual questions that smart contracts want to ask aren't that complex. They just require a lot of data history. They're, they're processing terabytes in, in most cases. So it's not about running like really, really, really complex business logic. It's actually simple. Simple aggregations of data, filters, uh, searches, uh, joins of data, um, arithmetic against data, relatively simple operations, but against the entire chain state. If you want to look at my wallet history, and I've been around Web3 for a while, maybe not as long as some of you guys, but long enough that you'd have to find my wallet across multiple chains, well, different keys on different chains, but you have to process a deep history. And this could end up being terabytes per chain. We're, I mean, we're already indexing about 45 terabytes of data per year across eight different chains. We launched uh, in, in beta. We have a beautiful user experience that we spent an immense amount of time building to make it really easy for developers to use AI to kind of write their queries for them. Who out here has written a query before in SQL? Raise your hand if you've written SQL. All right, now keep your hand up if that was an enjoyable experience. <laughs> 
Uh, look, SQL is a powerful language. The world runs on SQL. Modern business runs on SQL databases, but writing SQL is miserable. We can just admit that. So we, we, we built an open AI powered experience uh, to drive, the, to lower the development time and lower the cost, lower the time to value for finding the SQL, finding the data you want to you uh, discover, and then writing SQL. And then once you've published that SQL in production, that's where ZK proofs are leveraged. AI to find your data and write your queries, ZK to prove your queries to your smart contracts. We're really excited about the progress so far. We're going to be probably main netting sometime mid next year, and it's going to be an incredible journey offering the ZK layer for Web3. And we offer this ZK layer as a familiar SQL database to smart contracts facilitated through Chainlink. And by doing so, we're essentially turning smart contracts themselves into a mini ZK database on chain. Welcome to space and time. This is a new experience in Web3 data. This is unlike anything anyone's really ever experienced. And if you think I'm BSing, come explore it yourself. Thank you, guys.